Hi, I'm Dr. Mangesh Kamath. I'm a senior consultant medical oncologist, hematologist and bone marrow transplant physician practicing at Helios Cancer and Hematology Clinics, Bangalore. September is widely observed as World Blood Cancer Awareness Month. So I thought I will create a series of short videos to educate you about the different types of blood cancer. Blood cancer is cancer of the blood components. So as we are aware, in blood we have three major components, the red blood cells which are primarily responsible for reaching oxygen to each of the cells in our body, the white blood cells which are responsible for protecting our body from all the harmful elements in the atmosphere such as bacteria, virus, fungi and so on and last but not the least platelets. Platelets are responsible for preventing excess bleeding whenever we have an injury in our body. The injury can be from outside or injury can be from inside. So these three components when there is an abnormality in their structure and function they can cause blood cancers. Now we are all aware of the fact that all the blood components are primarily manufactured in our bone marrow. Bone marrow is the factory of our blood where we have millions of mother cells called as stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells and these through a series of maturation events can undergo maturation into either the RBC line, the WBC line or the platelet line. And I do not want to dwell much on it but it is possible that certain kind of damage starting from the mother cell to the committed uh, progenitor cell level you can get abnormal RBCs, abnormal WBCs and abnormal platelets. Now the abnormality may be just a structural abnormality which is not cancerous in many uh, uh, instances but sometimes the genetic damage or the genetic mutation can lead to an uncontrolled increase in the number of these blood components which can give rise to what is called as blood cancer. So basically we need to understand whenever we get a blood cancer is it confirmed by all the tests that are available to diagnose blood cancer. Just that you have a uh, high number of RBCs does not mean that you have blood cancer. There can be other factors that can possibly cause blood, uh, cause the increase of these RBCs. A uh, case in example, a patient comes with a hemoglobin of 18.9, which is much above the normal limit of 13 to 17. Does this patient have blood cancer? So what we do as oncologist, hematologist is ask them if they have certain predisposition to developing a high hemoglobin such as if they are living at a high altitude. People who live at high altitude from their childhood are known to have a higher hemoglobin levels because the oxygen concentration at that high altitude is low. So to provide better uh, quantities of oxygen to the cells the RBC production is increased. So it's a physiological change and it's not a cancerous change. Second is that chain smokers. Some chain smokers may be having high hemoglobin levels and this again is not necessarily cancer. Many a times if the smoking is stopped by these individuals, the hemoglobin or the RBC levels can come to a normal level. So folks, remember one thing, not all increase in blood cells is blood cancer. You need to be evaluated by a series of tests that only an oncologist or hematologist like me can do and once we do all these battery of tests then we can let you know whether this is a physiological or a paranormal increase in your blood components or is it a blood cancer.